Hi, I'm Pete, and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. We all make mistakes that we regret. I'm a perfectionist, and I kick myself over and over again for things that I've screwed up. But I dust myself off, and I try again. I'm going to use this video to show you some of the mistakes I've made and some of the mistakes that I see other farmers make all the time in hopes that you can learn from them and not make the same mistakes yourself. And while you're here, hit that little button down there and subscribe to our channel. It keeps us making videos. Like and comment. That helps us on YouTube too. Thank you. I got all the crappy jobs today. Cows pooped in not one of their watering troughs, but both of their watering troughs. And once they poop in them, they won't drink the water, and I don't blame them. One of the things that's important to do when you're starting your farm is planning your farm layout. And I made a lot of mistakes in this respect. Now, into my defense, for years when we lived here, this wasn't a farm because I was going to my office job. But this old pole barn is a good example. I planted big trees to screen this pole barn years ago and now those trees make it a pain in the butt to turn a tractor and get into here with a bale of hay or a wagon load of hay. I wish I'd done it differently, but what could I have known? One of the biggest mistakes that I see, and one that seems to cause a lot of other mistakes down the line, is not having a business plan for your farm. It's fine to start a farm without a business plan and do that first year to sort of get the feel of things, growing animals. But by the second year, you should have a business plan that should include how many animals you want to grow, how much profit you want to make, what your expenses are, ballpark what your vision for the farm is, what you want it to be, how you want to market it. So many people start a farm with the best of intentions, but they're not business savvy or they don't want to take the time to make a business plan and it really hurts them down the road. Even if it's just a set of handwritten figures and narratives on a couple pieces of scrap paper, you got to have a business plan. It's going to inform what equipment you buy, how many animals you buy, how big you build your barns and fences and other infrastructure. It's your guiding document. I make the mistake all the time of overestimating or underestimating what I can accomplish. And it gets to be a bigger issue once you're over 40, I think. I hear about so many farms where the owners just work themselves to death. And you have to pace yourself. Um, farmer burnout is a big thing, especially with small farms where you're facing an uphill battle, really. On the other hand, don't underestimate yourself either. If you're passionate about something, it's amazing what you can accomplish. If you love small farming, don't underestimate what you can do with your time and your land. If you don't know with a relative exact fashion how much money you're profiting per animal, you're making a huge mistake. You have no idea whether your farm is profitable because of this thing or that thing. Heck, you might not even know if your farm's profitable at all. The way I track animal profitability is through a simple system of keeping track of expenses and income on a per enterprise or per type of animal basis. And for more information on that, you can see my video up here it's called Knowing the Numbers, a simple system for tracking small farm profitability. Here's a mistake that I made, buying equipment that's too small for your ultimate operation. When you buy equipment and you make that investment, buy it for the ultimate size that your farm will be. I bought this tractor when our haying operation was smaller, and when I bought it, it fit all of our needs. It's got live hydraulics, it has a power shift, it's got a live PTO great hang tractor 
for making small square bales. When we started making big round bales, this tractor didn't have enough power and I had to go and buy a bigger tractor, which is also a great tractor. I spent a lot of time and money bringing this tractor back to life. I had to rebuild the engine, I went all the way through it, hydraulics, everything, and spent a lot of time and money on it for a tractor that has limited utility now. It's still useful, but I wish that I'd bought the big tractor first. Here's another example. When we first started making hay, I was using an old sickle bar mower that I restored, seven foot cut. It worked great when the hay was just right, but didn't work at all if the hay was not just right. So I bought a seven foot hay vine. I thought, this is all I'll ever need. Well, after a few years, I realized I was making a lot of passes with that hay vine, so I bought a nine foot hay vine. Things would have been a lot easier if I just started out with the nine foot hay vine but at least I have a spare now and if this one breaks down. Undervaluing your products, even after seven years, I still make the mental mistake of having this little guy in the back of my head that's saying, you're charging too much, they can get it cheaper at Walmart. Well, the fact is, they can't get it cheaper at Walmart. In fact, they can't even find this stuff at Walmart. The stuff at Walmart is no comparison to what you are growing and you should feel proud to charge what you need to make a profit. You put all your hard work into this and you raised a meat that is not available in the commercial food system. So don't undervalue what you sell. Big mistake that I see happen all the time. Somebody wants to start a farm and what's the first thing they do? They go out and buy a whole bunch of brand new equipment and borrow a ton of money. Don't do it. Buy equipment when you need it. Say you're growing cattle. Well, you're not gonna need a whole line of hang equipment in your first year. You probably won't even have enough head to justify the expense. Wait until your herd grows, then gradually bring in your hay in line. Undersizing your buildings. When we were raising laying hens as a hobby, we had this little eight by 12 chicken house and it had maybe a dozen hens in it. When we started the farm the second year in, we built a large hoop house tacked onto the back of that. As our laying flock grew, that hoop house turned out to be too small. And what I'd wish I'd done is look back at my business plan for the ultimate quantity of layers that we wanted to raise and built the house to that size. Now we're faced with having to tear down what we have and build a bigger one. Many times I've kicked myself for not planning ahead regarding animal production and taking animals to market. I will never forget this list. A broiler takes eight weeks to grow. A layer takes six months to grow out to egg laying age. A pig takes six months to grow from birth. And a cow takes at least two years to get to market. I have had more than one year where, for some reason, maybe because I'm busy, in the fall I forget to put the boar in with the sows and I wind up with pigs that are off timing for the summer barbecue season. And my gosh, I tell myself every time I'll never do that again and it still happens once in a while. And regarding beef, I'll never stop regretting not addressing our Dexter's breeding problems that we had in the first two years earlier on because it held up the expansion of our herd for those two years and now our beef's coming along but geez it could have been two years ago that's money in the bank that we missed so when you're planning your production schedule have in mind how long each animal takes to grow and what part of the season you want that animal to hit the market where it'll sell the best don't make the same mistakes I have Here's a killer and it's one that I'm guilty of all the time. It's not appreciating what you have. You gotta look up once in a while and look around you and see all that you've accomplished. Not only the animals and the fences and the great fields, but also your great family, how much you've grown as a person since you started farming. You need to smell the roses. That'll get you through the hard times.
one of the mistakes I make is I get discouraged from time to time. Having a small farm is a mountain of work and sometimes you don't know where to start. But I learned when I was an architect and we would design these big buildings that would take sometimes a year or two to design, is that whenever you have a big task you need to break it down into bite-sized chunks and do them one by one. So when I got up this morning I knew I had a crap ton of work to do and I just started attacking it one task at a time including this fun task of cleaning out the pig pens. I try to be an open book as far as revealing the mistakes that I've made so it can help you all out. I would love it if you all helped me out by putting the mistakes that you're maybe not so proud of in the comments section below and that way we can all learn from them. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.